In our gardens are hidden hundreds of wild stories that we rarely discover. Great dramas of life and death. Stories about teamwork or looking out for one's own interests. About standing on one's own feet. About doing the impossible. Where mistakes can cost you dearly and life can change in the blink of an eye. But where the most incredible things can also happen. For you, we find life as it unfolds in our gardens to get close to the secrets of the garden. Winter is sneaking up on us. The weather changes constantly, from clouds and rain to sun and snow. The cold weather keeps us indoors, but right outside the animals are in the fight of their lives. In the darker months, they fight against hunger, predators and the cold. But there are some stars of the garden that don't give up so easily. They brave the wintry conditions. And it's a battle for survival. The fox is one of the garden's largest predators. As food is scarce, the fox has expanded its territory. He has invited himself into our gardens and he's now king of our leftovers. But it's not just about food. You see, unlike many other animals, the fox looks to mate in the coldest months. This handsome male fox has been on a mission for weeks now. He's now so grown up that he's ready to pass on his genes and have cubs. So now he's looking for a female. And he's more than busy this winter as the female fox is only fertile for three days. For a moment, he's distracted in his search for a female. But even being so hungry, and the chickens being such a tempting meal, he continues on following the scent trail left by the female. The dinner will have to wait. He can't miss his chance. A female fox has left a message for him and his fine sense of smell. Foxes communicate through smells, and the female is telling his nose that she is out there somewhere and at the height of her fertility. In the last few weeks, a rise in hormone levels has made the testes of the male fox swell, and not being able to find the female is driving him crazy. so he calls for her with his special fox's howl. He's calling to mate, and it can be heard for miles. A fox's territory can be more than five square kilometers, so she can be far away, and yet with her excellent hearing, intercept his call. She's hiding coquettishly in her den, where she's waiting to see if he's clever enough to find her. He needs to find his female, 
so he can ensure the next generation. He's ready, but where is she? As the days go by and the frost sets in, life in the garden is truly changing. The ground gets harder and it's difficult to breach the topsoil. If you're not ready to endure, the winter will slowly squeeze the life out of you. The few that are left wage war on one another and must fight or be cunning to survive. In the garden, this might seem like a nice meal by the bird table, but in reality, it's a brutal power struggle amongst the birds to be first to the food. The hierarchy is like a gang. The strongest earns the right to lead. And there's no mercy amongst the birds. It's a battle of everyone for themselves. King of the garden bird table is the blackbird. And the smaller birds must yield to him and flee if he's not in the mood to share. The orange beak needs to show his strength, and he does not tolerate any other orange beaks at the feeding space. Everyone else must know who he is. He has no intention of leaving his garden in the winter. Even the black-beaked female blackbirds are put in their place by this tyrant. The blackbird puffs himself up and sucks in his guts. High above it all, the great tit is taking in the scenery. It looks adorable, but is a gang member in disguise. It's second in the bird hierarchy and the most brutal at the bird table. The yellow chest and black skull cap signal strength. The black line on his stomach lets everyone know he's strong. The headband paints him as a more fearsome creature, so the enemy doesn't spot those small, radiant eyes. It really looks adorable, but the great tit has been known to break the skull of a sleeping bat to eat out the brain. Everyone flees from the great tit and its skull-crushing beak. But mostly, it's only the sunflower seeds that must lay down their lives. Underneath the table, the ruling blackbird is still busy. This time, he's picking on a small robin. The robin redbreast is the little darling of the garden, but only a few know of its temper. It's the hot head of the bird table. There's often just one robin in each territory. Because this little bird doesn't tolerate others of its own kind around. The red chest is a bright warning sign for all other robins and can also be a red rag because it can infuriate any robin into a burning rage. The redder it is, the stronger it is. The robin prefers to eat insects, but during the winter months it must settle for whatever it can find. That's why the robin is one of the most vulnerable birds in the garden. The robin weighs just 18 grams, the same as a pack of chewing gum. Its small, thin legs resemble twigs, and they barely feel the cold. But it does all over the rest of its body. It's facing a harsh time, and it's not just its own kind and the smaller garden birds challenging it. In the air, there can be larger predators. But also the winter with its unpredictable weather can squeeze the life out of it.
others will keep an eye on the bird table, which can be a vital yet dangerous restaurant to visit. In an almost invisible hole in the ground lives a small and very special mouse. The yellow-necked mouse has large pretty ears and a golden necklace on its chest. Every day it must consume a fifth of its own weight. Its little heart beats at a gallop, an amazing 630 beats per minute, and it burns calories fast. The little yellow-necked mouse needs to eat in order to stay warm. But as it gets colder, there's also less food. So they must take up the fight against the birds on the bird table and crawl the long way up to the tempting seeds. Otherwise, it will freeze to death. The garden is full of danger for such a small mouse. But the journey to the bird table is important if it's to survive. The goal is near. The first meal of the day is within reach. The yellow-necked mouse has acrobatic skills and it's known for its elasticity, so it approaches lunch from above. But the yellow-necked mouse isn't the only one keeping an eye on the bird table. Another larger animal nearby has gotten wind of the little mouse. A male beech marten is afoot. He rarely shows himself to humans, although he actually shares our homes. He uses the garden as his hunting ground and looks for everything living and small. He loves mice and small birds. Like all members of the Martin family, he's agile, curious, and hyperactive. Once he gets started, he can leave wreckage in his wake. His little pink nose can sniff out prey from far away. It's his strongest sense. He uses the sensitive whiskers to form a three-dimensional image of his prey if it hides somewhere he can't see. And he has strong claws, with which he can grab on tight if needed. Now his strong senses have led him to the bird table. is ready to squeeze in his long, bendy, snake-like body wherever necessary to catch his prey. The yellow-necked mouse only just survived its encounter with the marten. But the bird table is now an even less safe place to visit. The marten now knows there are mice in his territory. And the yellow-necked mouse is recovering from such a terrifying experience. A little grooming is soothing to the little mouse. Now, where to find food? It will go to the places with easy access and see what it can find.
When the temperature drops significantly, most of the insects and small animals in the garden die. The cold penetrates their thin armor and kills them. The very few that can survive seek places where they can shelter. That's why one of the garden's most hardy little arthropods drags itself towards a dark and secluded sanctuary that can shield it from the cold. The centipede works its way very slowly through the grass with all its 34 legs. The cold slows it down. Its body is full of a sort of natural antifreeze, so it can withstand up to minus four or five degrees Celsius before freezing to death. The centipede is almost blind, but it can actually sense light. And it hates it. Two sensitive antennae lead it towards a darker sanctuary. There might even be a wood louse left alive for it to chase. Its antennae are equipped so that it can see, hear and feel even the footsteps of an ant. But what it feels now is something completely different from a small ant. If it is to cope against this type of enemy, it will need to use its amazing weapons. The centipede is a killing machine. It has a toxic bite and no less than three razor-sharp sets of jaws. And as a secret weapon, it has glue guns at the rear. It's going to need that now that it's facing the house spider. The spider has put out several meters of invisible tripwire. It's an equal opponent with just as fierce a bite. Either could be victorious. The centipede fends off the attack. Its body works as a hard and smooth armor with barbed wire attached to the outside. But it is also full of joints, making it more flexible. And then it shoots out its toxic, sticky drops from its glue guns. This ends up being its salvation. In the heat of the battle, the centipede lost a leg. But it has a special ability, and a new one quickly grows in its place. Now all it needs is a safe haven to hold up until next spring, without too many interruptions. At the edge of the woods near the gardens, there's no time to waste. It's now been two days since the lusty male fox started looking for the mother of its future cubs. He needs to hurry or he'll miss his chance. His excellent sense of smell leads him on his way. Just catching a few scent molecules will drive him forward. His nose is knobbly, and he moistens it with his tongue to bind all the scents in the air to it. Behind the soft snout are thousands of little cavities in the bone that catch all scent and send signals to his brain. Now he's caught wind of something. He's sniffed his way into the fertile female's territory. He follows a fragrant trail she's left for all her suitors. It's like a treasure hunt where the trail will be lost if he's not quick enough. But she won't accept just anyone. Male foxes can be faithless and abandon the expecting mother and seek their own paths. If she picks the wrong male, she'll end up a single mum in the den and that could mean death for her future cubs. She wants a male who is strong and faithful.
the male is close now. But foxes have several dens. And which one is she hiding in? All the dens smell seductively of her. But he can't find her. Right now, she's out enjoying her freedom hunting for food. Her sight isn't very good. So she gets her bearings through sound and scent. She perceives the landscape as a patchwork of smells. With her sharp hearing, she can precisely locate potential prey, even the smallest mouse underground. She stops and stands completely still, waiting for just the right time. Her jump is impressive and makes her able to attack the mouse from above. Even though she can't see her prey, her hunt is very successful. She wins almost every time. So she's pumped up on hormones, and in many ways, more man than the male robins. No one is to come near her place. It's her way of telling the other robins that they just better stay away. If she meets another robin in her hood, there will be trouble. And now another robin is getting insultingly close. Wait, where is it? Maybe behind this. She does her best to frighten and scare off the intruder. The red-breasted rival doesn't seem to get the message. It may look like play, but it's deadly serious. The robin is pumped up with testosterone, making her fearsome. The fierce temper is meant to scare off the other robins. So the more hormones in the body, the greater chance that the little robin makes it in the battle for survival. The rival in the mirror doesn't get the hint, and both birds must admit defeat. December is coming, and the green Christmas trees are as popular with the smallest animals as they are with us. And in the midst of the winter cold, there's a local microclimate in the evergreen needles, which attract the surviving insects and smaller animals. The centipede has found its way onto the protective pine branches. The antifreeze in its body is still keeping it alive, although the temperature has dropped. The cold makes the centipede more and more sluggish, and now it's hardly moving. It can hang here for weeks without food. But in a short while, the living environment on the branches can change. Because at Christmas time, we move nature closer to us, and all the little animals come with the tree into the warmth. 
It can revitalize them for a while, but may also be the beginning of the end. One who's already on home ground inside is the beech marten. He comes and goes when no one sees him. Because a warm home with a secret space is a gift for someone like him. We think there are rats in the attic, but it's just the hyperactive beech marten at work. He's found his way into one of the more remote corners of the house. He investigates everything, just in case it's edible. He's in the mood for a hunt, and nothing escapes his attention. House spider is a delicious little snack. A juicy source of protein. His tactics are to exhaust the spider. It looks like he's playing with it. But in reality, it's pure strategy. A more dangerous opponent could have sharp teeth and a toxic bite to avoid. but the Martin wins the unequal fight. The temperature has dropped so far that the little male mouse cannot survive outside any longer. He's freezing and desperate for food. So the little yellow-necked mouse is also drawn to the house. Life inside can seem full of promise. In here is a gigantic buffet with all sorts on offer. But no place is a sanctuary. And not only the Martin has it in for him. He carefully approaches the fragrant raisin. The Martin follows every move. After a scare like this, his nervous system is in its highest state of alert. Therefore, he sits completely still. The instinct for flight is fighting the instinct for fight. Who makes the first move? The hunt is on. season, a miniature-sized battle is also playing out on the pine branches of the Christmas tree. The centipede has come with the pine tree into the heat, and it's not alone. Our Christmas trees house up to 20,000 insects and other small animals when it's brought inside. There are myriads of small animals, like centipedes, mites, wood lice, aphids, and spiders hiding among the folded hearts and paper chains. For a short while, they enjoy the benefits of life inside, but it's short respite. The heat and dry air slowly squeezes the life out of the small animals. Even the strong centipede will eventually succumb. 
it simply dries out. Death finds everyone, outside as well as in. Winter festivities, and especially the thunderous New Year's, is a hard time for the garden's animals. They panic. Birds are startled and fly into things, or are frightened to death. It's not just the deafening noise, but also all that goes with it. Hedgehog usually sleeps all winter in its lair. This young male is from the summer litter. He went to sleep in the autumn, but has woken from his slumber. He's hungry and didn't fill his fat deposits enough before sleeping. Every minute in the cold will require a lot of energy for him but the hunger has still driven him away from his secure and warm shelter. He's a predator who normally lives off insects. But this time of year, he must make do with what else he can find in our gardens. Will our New Year's leftovers let him sleep a good long while? Will he never wake again? Only time will tell. The winter quiet is interrupted by a rhythmic pecking. Not all animals sleep away the winter. Some must fight for their food. This is the spotted woodpecker, one of the most charismatic birds of the garden. It's not just for fun that he bangs his head hard against the tree trunk. You see, hiding under the hard bark, a delicious larvae, which it needs. It can hammer away with up to 12,000 beats of its head a day, with a force a thousand times that of gravity. It can carry on because it doesn't get concussed. Its skull is like a foam-filled bicycle helmet that protects its small head from any damage. To get the larva out, the woodpecker must stick its long tongue down into the hole and fish out the larva. Its tongue is actually so long that it has to roll it around its skull to make room for it. This constant hard labor wears down the woodpecker's beak up to three whole beak lengths every year. in the garden, another woodpecker is also looking for food. It, however, has spotted the bird box, but it's not the only one who's targeted this prey. Food is scarce in the winter, so the garden animals can get quite desperate. 
With a lot of effort, the male woodpecker has finally made a decent hole in the box. There's something in there, but he can't quite figure out how to get it out. The woodpecker does what it does best and pecks away to the best of his abilities. The squirrel, however, is a bit more dexterous and puts his intelligence to use. He rudely decides to capitalize on the woodpecker's hard work and runs off with the reward. The woodpecker has been duped. a rabbit that has come into the garden searching for food. It's not an easy prey for the fox, as it's quick and agile. But hunger drives the young male fox to give it a try. The hunt is on. Luck was on his side this time. Time will tell if he'll also take his coming job as a father seriously and provide for the whole family. If he fails, the female fox and the cubs are heading for hard times. Winter can be unpredictable. When the snow covers land and city, it's a welcome gift for the animals in the garden. Because it can be dry, and without water, the animals will die of thirst. now says February. But a false spring peeps out as if it was an early summer's day. The warm rays from the sun lures the little robin to the vacant burr table. But the buffet is also the most exposed place in the garden. In one of the big trees in the garden, away from the burr table, the sparrowhawk lies in wait. He scans the garden for small victims and gets ready for a deadly airstrike. He hops up one branch for a better view. But all attacks must be planned thoroughly. Once they've begun, there's no time to hesitate. he throws himself into the air and shoots off.
very few birds of prey have the same unique flying technique as him. The air is pressed between his wings and the ground, working like a cushion of air he can glide along on. His wings are wide and short. Like a missile, he can shoot himself through even the smallest holes. His speed is a whopping 50 kilometers an hour, and he has only a few seconds to navigate to avoid a crash. The route is meticulously planned. It's all about staying invisible as long as possible. He takes advantage of the obstacles in the garden to get very close to his prey before being seen. Only very few birds can turn on their own axis at speed during an attack. He's an accomplished flyer. It's a battle of survival. its cold and grey weather is finally over. The warmth of the sun will once again fill our gardens. Soon everything will come out in full bloom. And all over our gardens, new life will once again begin to appear.